first thing I want to do is distinguish probability as a mathematical object from the various things that this object is used to represent. This distinction helps to frame what we're doing in this first tutorial course in the probability series, which is on the meaning of probability, and how it differs from what we're doing in the second tutorial course, which is on the rules for reasoning with probabilities. The first thing to note is that modern probability theory is really a branch of mathematics. The first formal work on the subject is from the 17th century in France by mathematicians Pierre de Fermat and Blaise Pascal, who were trying to figure out whether if you throw a pair of dice 24 times, you should bet even money on getting at least one double six over those 24 throws. They had an exchange of letters, and out of this exchange grew the first mathematical description of the rules for reasoning with probabilities. Now, modern probability theory is a complicated beast, but here are some of the key ideas. You imagine some set of elementary events or outcomes. Let's assume there are only six. So there are six elementary outcomes or events. These could be the six sides of a dice. We want to associate a probability with each elementary outcome, rolling a one or a two or a three, etc. In this case, it's pretty obvious. The odds for each of these elementary outcomes is just one in six. But we also want to be able to figure out the odds of different logical combinations of these elementary outcomes. Like for example, the odds of rolling an even number, or a number less than 4, or a number that's either a 1 or a 5, or a number that's not a 6. Now I just want you to notice what's going on here. We've got these expressions that read the probability of event A equals some number, and this event is either an elementary outcome or some logical combination of elementary outcomes. Mathematically, what we have here is a function that assigns to each event a number. That symbol p represents a mathematical function. More specifically, this function takes as input some description of a possible event and maps it onto the real number line. The value of this number is going to lie between 0 and 1, where 0 represents events that can't happen, that have probability 0, and 1 represents events that must happen, that have probability 1. So the odds of rolling a 1 are just 1 in 6, which is about 0.17. The odds of rolling an even number is just one half, or 0 0.5, because the even numbers include 2, 4, and 6, which make up half of all the possible outcomes. The other thing to note here is that, mathematically, the way we represent these different events is in terms of subsets of the space of all possible events. That's how a description of an event gets translated into mathematical form. So a probability function is a mapping between the subsets of this larger set and the real numbers between 0 and 1. Now we're not doing formal probability theory here. This is just about all I want to say about probability as a mathematical concept. Since for critical thinking purposes, this is about all you need to know. Mathematicians will use all kinds of terminology to really specify what's going on here. They'll talk about sigma algebras and structures that satisfy the Kolmogorov axioms, but all of this is stuff that we don't really need to worry about. The one thing I want you to note about probability theory is this. Given an assignment of probabilities to events A and B, the mathematics of probability gives us rules for figuring out the probabilities of various other events. We'll learn the basic rules for these four basic logical relations, negation, conjunction, disjunction, and conditional probability later in the second tutorial course in this series. But note that it says, given an assignment of probabilities to A and B, we can work out these other probabilities. Here's a question. How exactly do we assign values for the probability of A and B in the first place? The mathematics of probability doesn't really address this question. Now why not? Because this is really a question about what it means to say that the probability of an event is such and such. This is about what probability as a concept represents in the world outside of mathematics. Now, this is the question that different interpretations of probability try to answer. We're going to look at a few of these and their variations in the next section of the course. They each represent a distinct way of thinking about chance and uncertainty in the world. Now the mathematics of probability puts some constraints on what can count as a viable interpretation of probability, but the mathematics allows for more than one interpretation. So the question isn't which interpretation is correct, but rather which interpretation is suitable or appropriate for a given application. That's why, as critical thinkers, it helps to be familiar with these different interpretations, because no single interpretation is suitable for every situation. And there are some situations where no interpretation is suitable, 
and we have to conclude that it's simply a mistake to apply probabilistic concepts to situations like these.